what's up? Everything bagel pizza. Looks like a pizza, tastes like a bagel. Any questions? To get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer and into the bowl of that, I'm gonna measure 450 grams of warm water, eight grams of yeast, five grams of sugar, 690 grams of strong all-purpose flour, and 18 grams of salt. The dough hook goes on, and now I'm gonna mix this on low speed for about three minutes or until the dough started to come together into a cohesive mass and it's actually starting to be kneaded like this. From here, the speed's gonna go up to high and I'm gonna continue to mix this for four to five more minutes. After four minutes on high speed or about seven to eight minutes total of mixing, this dough is now clear in the bowl and it looks good. Now to test if this is properly mixed, I'm gonna flip up the mixer and give it a pull. It's not shearing or tearing and that's how I know it's a properly mixed dough. Before I go any further though, let me clarify that if you don't have a stand mixer, you certainly could make this dough properly by hand, but with a few small changes. The hand mixed version starts with the medium bowl and 450 grams of 86F 30C water, just like before, but the yeast is gonna be four grams instead of eight. More about that in a second. Behind that comes five grams of sugar, 690 grams of flour and 18 grams of salt. To mix this, I'm gonna grab a sturdy spoon and then give everything a thorough stir to combine. At this point, it's just a powdery mess, but as I stir it, it slowly turns into a clumpier mess. When I can't stir it anymore like this, now I'm gonna switch from a spoon to a very wet hand. This is gonna keep the dough mostly in the bowl and off of my arm hair. And the move for mixing dough like this is just a simple pinch and turn and squeeze until you reach some state of uniformity between the water and flour. Once that's fully combined by hand into a shaggy mess like this, the lid goes on and we're gonna check back on this dough in 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes to finish the dough, now we're gonna give it a strength building fold. For that, I'm gonna grab one side of the dough and then pull it out to let me meet resistance. In this case, it's about 10 inches or so. Then I'm gonna fold that all the way back over. I'm gonna repeat that about four more times all the way around the bowl. Then to finish this strength building fold, I'm gonna switch to a round and tuck maneuver to get this pulled into a nice taut little ball. The 30 minutes of time between the hand mix and the fold here is all the difference between eight and four grams of yeast. If we used more yeast like we did in the stand mix version, this dough would be way overproofed by tomorrow morning. So we cut it in half to allow for that 30 minutes at room temp. Now the lid goes on, but this time only for 15 minutes. When I come back 15 minutes later or 45 minutes, since we hand mix this, this dough will be a lot more rested and finally ready to be divided just like the stand mixer version we made earlier. From this point forward, the process for the hand mixed and stand mixed doughs will be exactly the same. So we're gonna cut back to that stand mixer version, which as a reminder, didn't get any fermentation time at at all. This is coming straight from the mixing stage we saw earlier. To divide this, I'm gonna grab my gram scale and then cut this dough down into four roughly 285 gram size pieces. That looks good. Once I've got these divided into four equal size chunks like this, I'm gonna grab something to hold onto this dough in the fridge overnight. This time I'm using four glass Pyrex bowls and I'm gonna spray them liberally with olive oil pan spray. Regular olive oil works here as well, but I find that the dough comes out of these glass bowls a lot easier with pan spray. Now to shape these balls, I'm gonna pull out both sides and then fold them over each other, turn that 90 degrees, pull it out once more, and then fold it over. Flip that dough over onto the folds and then round it off just a little bit more until it's taut and more uniform. We really don't want this to be overly strengthened as that's gonna make the pizza dough pretty hard to stretch out later on. Just a little bit of strength and that looks good. I'm gonna move it over into that sprayed Pyrex and then finish the next three. Once I've got these pizza balls shaped, I'm gonna cover them with the lids and then move them over to the fridge to ferment overnight. This dough is meant for tomorrow morning, but it's only gonna get better over the next five to six days in the fridge. So if you wanna make a few of these doughs into a non-bagel pizza later on, uh, yeah, go for that. Also, if you don't have any of these perfectly sized glass pizza bowls like me, that's totally okay. A sheet tray with some pan spray on it will also work very well. Just keep in mind that you'll need to pull out all of the doughs at one time. I just personally prefer the flexibility of using an individual dough container when I have access to it. Now, while these doughs rest in the refrigerator, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video and that's Cove Audio. I've been using their new speaker called the Commuter 2 for cooking a lot recently. And for a Bluetooth speaker, it gets very loud. It's a little bit lighter and it's optimized what? to be made by you at home. Shoot the video. Wednesday. For me though, one of the coolest parts about the speaker is that you can twist it in half and have two separate speakers like this. That means a super wide stereo spread, or I can move one of these upstairs into my office. And when I'm listening to music or audiobooks around the house and moving around, I don't have to hit pause. I really like that kind of minimalist design too. This color is concrete and it really blends in with my entire vibe. As you guys know, if I'm gonna have something out on the counter, I really want it to look visually pleasing. To me, the Commuter 2 isn't just another Bluetooth
Bluetooth speaker. It's super loud, the sound fidelity is way better than my other speaker, and it stays charged for up to seven hours. Oh yeah, and like I said, it's basically two speakers in one. Right now, when you click the link in my description and use code BL67, you can get up to 67% off the Commuter 2 or anything else on the website. That's a lot of percent off, so use the link in my description and take a look. Thank you, Cove Audio. One last optional bit of prep to do the night before we make pizza is a quick batch of pickled red onions. Raw red onion is way more commonly found on everything bagels, but these pickled red onions are an amazing staple to have in your fridge. They look beautiful and they're super easy to make. So start with two medium red onions and then chop off the stem end, cut in half, and then give them a peel. Once they're peeled up, I'm gonna slice them horizontally with the grain of the onion, or think of it as pull to pull. Once I've got about a quart of those cut up, I'm gonna pull out a small saucepan and put it down over high heat and into that measure my brine. That's 400 grams of white distilled vinegar, 400 grams of water, 80 grams of sugar, and eight grams of salt. This is the exact same brine as the pickled peppers from the shawarma video. I'm gonna bring that to a boil and then in goes my red onions. From there, I'm gonna make sure those onions are submerged and then I'm gonna kill the heat. As these cool, they're gonna cook just a little bit, but they're also gonna stay quite crunchy. 24 hours later, you're gonna have a super pretty, tart, sweet, savory pickled red onion that is gonna be useful for pretty much anything. The next day, about 45 minutes before we wanna eat bagel pizza, I'm gonna pull out my dough and let it temper. As you can see, the dough's grown quite a bit overnight in these glass bowls, and this one has developed a nice large bubble right in the middle. And that's not a big deal, by the way, since this dough had a higher percentage of yeast in it, the inside took a little bit longer to get to fridge temp than the outside, and thus produced more gas, and sometimes that's gonna lead to a bubble. Just pop it. Real quick, I wanna show you guys what the hand-mixed version of this dough looks like the next day. And by the way, it's on a sheet tray, so you can also get an idea of what that looks like. Let me know in the comments if you guys are going hand-mixed or stand-mixed for this dough. While this dough tempers, I wanna preheat my oven to 550F or 287C and make sure that my pizza steel is gonna be loaded into this oven on the bottom third. One last little bit of prep while that oven preheats is to whip up some cream cheese. For that, I've got 16 ounces or two packages of cream cheese that I pulled out of the fridge about 20 minutes ago. You can whip this stuff cold straight out of the fridge for sure, but when they're malleable like this, it's gonna whip up a lot faster. Into the stand mixer they go. Now from here, I'm gonna add the whisk attachment and then turn the mixer on to very high speed and whip this for two to three minutes. Unfortunately, I don't think you can whip cream cheese like this by hand, but that's not really a biggie. It turns out that cream cheese by itself tastes very good. Without the stand mixer, it just will be a little bit less light. After about three minutes of whipping this up, you can see that this cream cheese is starting to look pretty fluffy and close to the stuff you would find in any case at a New York deli. Now I'm gonna transfer this to a deli container and now let's round up everything we need to make this pizza. We've got our pickled red onions that we made yesterday at the ready. I've got some fresh dill fronds that I've picked ahead of time. I've got some nice salty capers that we've drained all the brine off of. Here's that whipped cream cheese that we just made. And I've got a half pound or 225 grams of smoked salmon. This is a North Atlantic salmon from Scotland and it's quite fatty and it tastes amazing. Now it's time to make bagel pizza. The first move is to flour my dough, then my board, and then I'm gonna gently flip that out of the glass. Next, I'm gonna flip this dough off the board and into my hand and then grab a bowl of everything bagel seed mix. From here, I'm gonna lay the wet side of this dough down right into the seeds, the wet side being the side that was touching the glass all night. I bought this pre-made blend offline and I will link to it in the description below because tracking down all the ingredients locally here in St. Louis didn't work at all. I went to like four stores and couldn't find any of the onion or garlic flakes that are necessary for everything bagel mix. Once the dough's been pressed into this mix for a few seconds, we're gonna flip it back out and onto the cutting board, but make sure that that board has a good dusting of flour. To stretch this pizza, I'm gonna press down with the pads of my fingers on both hands to slowly flatten and extend out the dough. I'm gonna switch back and forth between the back of my hand and my fingertips as things get properly stretched out. And once it's about six inches across, we're gonna pull it out and flip it over to stretch it even more. Again, I pin it to the board with my right hand, pull it out as far as I can with my left and then flip it over my right wrist. I repeat that five, six, seven times until I get this dough stretched out into a roughly 10 inch round. In general, I wanna degas and press down the middle of this pizza quite a bit because there's gonna be no sauce or cheese on top of it while it bakes. And if I don't degas it, it's gonna get doughy and turn into a loaf of bread. Once this dough is about 10 inches across and nicely round and flat, I'm gonna grab my larger pizza peel that I use for loading pizzas into the oven and I'm gonna hit that with a large pinch of semolina. The dough goes down 
down and I'm gonna take one last look to make sure everything is really well coated with everything spice and that's looking good. I'm gonna shake the peel to make sure things are not stuck and then it's time to load. The semolina underneath this pizza should allow it to slide right off of the peel and notice that I rolled the back of mine just a little bit. That's no big deal, adjust it, we're back on track. And now I'm gonna bake this for six to 10 minutes but that's gonna vary pretty widely depending on your oven. Towards the end of this bake, I'm gonna come back with my smaller pizza peel. I use this to actually cook the pizzas. The wooden one wouldn't work for that. And I'm gonna check on the bottom. It looks slightly crisped up, it looks lightly browned, and it's fully set up, so I'm gonna take it out. Take a look at this thing. As a standalone food, this looks good. It's toasty and savory, it's salty and crunchy and a little bit bready. It's thicker than a regular pizza. Before we build this into a bagel pizza though, we have to let it cool for just about five minutes so that we don't cook the cream cheese and salmon when we put it on. But after five minutes, now I'm gonna smear a very generous amount of that whipped cream cheese that we just made. About a quarter pounds worth per pizza should do the trick. Behind that's a sprinkling of some juicy, salty capers, maybe 20 to 30 of those in total. You should get a pop of caper maybe every two to three bites. Up next is the the smoked salmon and I'm putting down about a quarter pound or 125 grams worth per pizza. To garnish, I'm gonna lay down some of those bright pink pickled red onions that I showed you guys how to make earlier. Again, maybe 15 to 16 pieces would bring those waves of contrast that we're looking for. And then finally, some fresh dill. That's a simple one, just put down as much as you like. You guys, this very simple pizza dough is now actually a plate sized bagel sitting on my countertop. I think most people with a blindfold on would probably not be able to tell the difference between this and an actually good fresh New York bagel. Overall, it's bready and covered with nearly burnt onion and garlic, and that really brings that signature New York bagel aggression to the table. I really hope you guys dazzle everyone you live with next Sunday with this bagel pizza or on some weekend soon. They deserve it. You deserve it. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, I just want to say a huge thank you to my friend and chef, Michael Petrus, for giving me his idea for everything bagel pizza. A few weeks back, he posted about it on Instagram, and right away I was like, hey dude, can I please have that idea? And he said, sure. So Michael Petrus, I'm looking right at you, man. Thank you so much for this great idea. You're an absolute pro, you're a bad boy, you're great at fly fishing, and your pizza tastes amazing. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, and we'll see you next time.